Hey guys, and welcome if you're new. If you clicked on this video, you probably are in a sorority and going to be living in your house or you're thinking about joining one. I haven't seen a lot of videos like this, so I thought I'd share with you all the things I wanted to know before moving into my sorority house that nobody told me, but I'm gonna tell you, so you'll be prepared. I have a list. I'm planning on separating this into sections, sort of. The first section is what to expect, and then the second section is what to bring. And then the third that I'm going to cover is kind of comparing living in a sorority to living in a dorm. They also kind of like go together. So, okay. So, what to expect when living in a sorority house? So, there are different room styles. So, the way my house was is there was a cold dorm. Different houses have different names for it, but basically you sleep in the upstairs where there is a room that's filled with bunk beds and it's always dark and cold and there's certain rules like you can't talk in there, you can't go on your phone in there, um, your alarms have to be vibration alarms and stuff like that which honestly it sounds kind of scary but you get the best sleep of your life in the cold dorm and I'm a very light sleeper so I thought I'd be constantly getting woken up by like the door opening and closing but honestly it's so nice especially for naps because whenever you're tired you can just head on up upstairs or if you and your roommates have different sleep schedules and you like to go to bed late and they like to go to bed early or the other way around you guys can both be happy and sleep peacefully and you don't have to argue about that and then if you have that kind of style sorority house then you will have a day room in your day room it's basically your desk a closet drawers and a futon that's what came with ours yours might come with some other stuff so basically everything besides your bed you do everything in there for the most part you can do your homework you can hang out I don't know my house has both options so first semester I had the cold dorm so I experienced that and I honestly didn't mind it at all I really liked it actually and then second semester I had a sleeper which is how some other houses are designed and basically that means that your bed is in your room for us there's a door separating the bedroom part like the sleeping part from where the desks and clothes were but other than that your bed is with your stuff so different houses have different setups some have all cold dorm day room and some have all sleeper styles and the ones that are like sleeper are probably more similar to like a dorm situation so honestly that's your preference but i would not choose a house based on that when i was going through recruitment i was so scared of the cold dorm so scared but I'm assuring you, it's not that bad. I promise. It really isn't. Okay. Roommates. Living in a sorority house, you will most likely get to choose how many roommates you have. And you'll do this before you move in. For us, we switch rooms every semester. So if you didn't get along with your roommates from first semester, or you just want to switch things up, you can live with different people second semester. First semester, I had six. Six roommates? Five roommates. I had five roommates. And then second semester, I had three roommates. So only four of us. And there's different sizes of rooms and stuff like that that you can choose from. For food, in a sorority house, obviously you're going to have some sort of chef or food company that provides you food that is included in your dues for living in the house. And... Some of you might be thinking, well, I'm gluten-free, I'm vegetarian, I'm whatever. Any of that is fine. Your sorority will take into consideration your dietary restrictions, dietary needs, and they will make special meals for you guys so you won't go hungry. Also, for meals, there are scheduled meal times, and ours are honestly pretty early, and at first, it's kind of hard to get used to but you adjust like for example our dinner was from five to six and it ended at six 
So if you weren't hungry or if you were in class, you would have to sign up for a late plate. And that basically is them making you a plate and then putting it in the fridge so you can come and get it whenever you want. So that is usually an option for most houses. It's also really nice because then everyone eats together at the same time. So it's not like a nice little family style meal if you will another thing you might be wondering about is noise levels you probably don't want to be that one person that's like i need it sort of quiet to get anything done we had quiet hours and i'm assuming most houses have this so during weekdays starting at a certain time you can't like be blasting music in the hallway or screaming or something like that and that just made sure that everyone could do their homework and stuff um but honestly, like it can get loud, but it isn't loud all the time. It's not as loud as I expected it to be. And if I'm being honest, most of the noise came from the frats next door. Living in a sorority house can be sort of intimidating before you actually experience it. I highly recommend living in in the beginning when you first join a sorority. So I lived in last year my sophomore year it's just so easy to make friends and get to know people because you get to know people so much better when you're just randomly brushing your teeth at the same time and you get closer with someone when you're living in the house as opposed to if you're living out so i would definitely try to start off living in the house and also say hi to everyone everyone in my house everyone's friendly before i lived in my sorority house i was worried that I wasn't gonna make any friends and I would have to look a certain way all the time and whatever. So that's just not true. Sorority houses look pretty on the outside and they're pretty on the inside, but at the end of the day, it's your home. It's where you live. No one cares. Nobody cares. That being said, be respectful of everyone and of the space you're in. Because there are a bunch of common areas like living rooms, formals, that you can go in. So don't trash it, pick up after yourself. Now I'm gonna go into what you should bring. First, I'm gonna talk about bathroom stuff. Shower shoes, you need shower shoes in the shower. I know the shower's prettier than the dorm shower or any public shower, but wear shower shoes. Also, you're gonna need to bring your shower caddy. So that shower caddy you got for freshman year, don't throw it out, you're gonna need it. And there's space in the bathroom for you to put away your shower caddy so you don't need to be lugging it back to your room and then things get wet, whatever. I suggest bringing a robe because most girls would wear a robe to the bathroom and bring their towel and then after they're done showering they would dry off and then wear their robe back because depending on where your room is in the house it might not be super close to the bathroom and you don't necessarily want to be walking around in a towel. I suggest also saving your bedding from your dorm. The beds we had were twin XL and I'm pretty sure every house had twin or twin XL. So you're most likely gonna have the same size bed. Instead of going out and having to buy all new bedding, just keep the same one. And especially if you are in the cold dorm, no one's gonna see your bedding, so it doesn't really matter. So now I'm gonna go into comparing living in a sorority house to living in a dorm because there are some similarities but some differences and part of the reason i'm comparing everything to a dorm is because i lived in my sorority house my sophomore year so right after my freshman year and freshman year i lived in the dorms also i haven't lived in an apartment yet i'm going to live in an apartment next year but i can't really compare the two honestly in the dorms i think i had more personal space when you're living in your sorority house don't bring a ton of stuff. There's not gonna be room for it. And if you are in a position that you could go home easily-ish, like for the seasons at least, I would suggest packing for that season. So if you're going in fall, pack some, like a couple lighter clothes, but mostly heavier clothes, also depending on where you go to school. You aren't gonna have as much storage. Don't bring your whole wardrobe. You're gonna have to share your closet most likely. Our closets were the full length of the wall, so, you kind of just had to divide it up with your roommates and deal with it. If you can't go home, then maybe invest in a storage unit somewhere, but you're just not gonna have a ton of storage space. Okay, so rules. There are still rules that you need to follow in the sorority house. I mentioned quiet hours, but that's not like a 
super structural. Also, each house is different. Let's talk about visitors. Maybe you have a boyfriend and you're like, well, if I live in my sorority house, I can't have my boyfriend over. Wrong. At least for us. We have man hours. So during certain times of the day, you can have your friend over. But at the same time, you have to make rules with your roommates in addition to the rules that the house has and be respectful for everyone. They can't spend the night. So that's different from the dorms because in the dorms you could kind of do whatever you wanted with that type of thing and nobody really cared except for your roommate. There's some other rules, but if you have any questions, comment them down below because I will definitely get back to you. In a dorm, you have an RA. In a sorority, you have a house mom. They kind of do similar things. Our house mom is so sweet and precious, but she's actually moving to Florida, so she's not gonna be with us anymore. She had two little doggies, so we could play with them whenever we wanted, but she's basically just there so that if anything does happen or go wrong, or in case of emergency, we have someone to go to and to reach out to who is there for us. It honestly depends on who you have as your house mom, who you had as your RA, but for the most part, house moms are very nice and not as intimidating as an RA. Okay, so as I mentioned before, there's more places in the house to study and hang out. So that's different from the dorm. It's very nice. However, there isn't a kitchen for you to use. I know some dorms have kitchenettes with like little kitchens so you can cook. We didn't have that in the sorority house. So you can't cook in your sorority house. We did have a little kitchenette though that had like a toaster and a microwave and a fridge so for those things you could use it but there wasn't like a stove okay so that is all i have for right now on everything you need to know about living in a sorority house if you have any questions please comment them down below i can answer them for you and don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already i'll see you on my next one love you bye